Question of the day. What's a game that you got merely because you saw its table presence? I think of a game like Expansity or things like that where you look at it and you go, wow, I've got to play that just because how it looks on the table. Which brings me to Dice Tower Con this year. I uh, met Mike and he showed me this. Uh, he works, you know, this is from Edgar Spiels, who it's come from. Uh, he showed me this game and it looks just awesome on the table. You see these little buildings, they're all nice carved and, uh, not carved, they're all nicely sculpted little different types of buildings and they fit in so intricately. So I had to know what is ERA. So let's take a look right now, what ERA is, how it plays, Matt Leacock's newest game, right now. So your starting setup will essentially look like this. You get a keep, a farm, uh, some little townhouses. You actually get three of those. Sorry, I forgot to put those out there. Uh, and then a scorched earth piece. Now, certain buildings will give you types of dice, uh, which would be what these small yellow ones do, as well as your keep, which gives you uh, gray dice. So your starting dice pool is going to be one gray dice and three yellow dice. Now, as you roll these, the phases of the game pretty much go like this. You're going to, uh, first of all, you're going to roll then you're gonna collect your goods, then you're gonna pay your food, so you do have to harvest, you have to pay one food, one grain, per dice you have out there. Then you have to resolve if there are any calamities that happen, and these happen because based on the amount of skulls you have there, you check it's for a certain table on your board here, based on the amount of skulls you have, you check that table, and if it's, you know, you do whatever it says. Some of them are bad for you, most of them are bad for you, but one of them, if you roll three of those skulls, is bad for the other player. You then can build, uh, and these are all done based on the symbols you show here. So you collect your resources based on what you have in your dice pool. And you also will get to build based on how many hammers you have on your dice pool. See the hammers there? So you're kind of hedging your bets. Well, do I want to get the resources this turn? You're going to track those here. Do I want to get the resources this turn? Or do I want to build more this turn? Essentially, the game ends when three uh, in a two-player game and I think four in a uh, larger count game of the building types run out completely. So... If there's no more farms, well, that's one of them. And you'll keep playing until all of those, uh, whatever the limit is, whether it's three or whether it's four, are gone. You're then going to score points. Now, let's look at just a couple of interesting things about this. This is really neat because in the age of roll, or in the era, I should say, of roll and rights. See what I did there? Uh, this is not necessarily a roll and right, but if you like roll and rights, it's going to feel like that because you are going to be rolling and building this place out to make it look nice. And that's what I like about it is, is well, it could be kind of hard because... Um, these spaces are only so many big. Now, there are several different types of walls and several different other types of buildings. But here's the cool thing. A lot of these buildings are U-shaped, too. So you say, well, I can't really put anything else here. Well, the good thing is you take that brown building that's U-shaped, pop it right around there. So a lot of cool spatial elements as well as just you know engine building elements. So I love the fact that it's engine building with spatial elements that's absolutely there. So uh, I'll talk more about that in the final thoughts, but essentially you're going to score these books are going to be straight points and these skulls are going to be negative points at the end of the game. But really that's what you're going to do. You're going to rinse and repeat, you're going to roll, you're going to collect, you're going to pay your your food, you're going to check that chart, you're going to build and then you can potentially fight and when you when you fight you're actually leveraging your um your your strength over the other whoops over the other nations or over the other cities and basically that means the person who rolls the most swords uh, can request a resource from someone it's, it's a neat little deal uh, but i don't want to go too much into that because the meat of the game is in fact that rolling and building to get the points now let's talk about what things score at the end of the game which would be on this little sheet right here you get to see it um, if anything is inside of a wall so it's completely walled off every single building in there is worth double points your keep is worth one point adds those and you see which ones add dice right there it says this is what the buildings are this is the cost to build them this is how many points they are and that's the effect so those three in a row the um keep the longhouse and the townhouse and the church those four in a row give you a new dice they're also worth a point apiece if they're walled in they're worth three uh an extra point uh, you then have things like the farm, which during the collection step, you're going to get food. So you're building your engine where you're not requiring those dice to provide you that food if you have enough farms out there. Same thing with the lumber mill. There isn't one for stone. Notice that, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the hospital, it's adjacent immune to disease. So one of the calamities that can happen is disease. You see those over here, uh, but you can make things uh, immune to that, which is nice. You then have the monastery, is you get to pick which one of your uh, one of your die before it goes out there and before you roll it, which is nice. You can re-roll a couple times anyway, but that one actually lets you set 
the die to the face you want it. The market is just, it increases, is a point per empty space, I believe, or point per occupied space. You have to look that up. It's not that important, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, a guild hall is a point per resource at the end of the game, which is really nice. The university just gives you an extra point per those books that you have. And the cathedral gives you a point per worker at the end of the game. And I love it because the cathedral legit looks like a cathedral. Like They've really done a great job of this. But that is, in fact, how you play Era right there. So that's Era. Basically, it is a city building game that has some dice elements. I, I might have said it in the how to play part. In the era of roll and writes, this is in fact technically the same feel as a roll and write, but you're not writing. You're placing them onto your board. So if you like that genre of, well, I have my dice that I own because of the stuff that's on my board and I get to roll those and get to use what shows up. And then I get to make that even better by putting more things out there and getting potentially more dice, this game is for you. It is so neat the way you build your engine, but also physically build your city. And I love the way that certain buildings are shaped where you think, well, there's no room. I'm not going to be able to put this building. And then you start laying it out there and oh my gosh, you end up having this wonderful little intricate um, setup. But Unfortunately, sometimes it's bad for you to have them all touching because of the way the, uh, the cate cataclysm, whatever, whatever, that rule works. So I really like how this plays. I like the straightforward phases of it. It's very simple. It's very easy to understand. You roll the dice. You get what's on the dice. You do that. You can build. You take these buildings, put them onto your board. Here's what they give you. I like the player aid. I think it's really well done. It's easy to understand. All in all, this is a win for me. My only gripe is, that the, I'll be honest with you, the yellow um, mat is just a little jarring to me. I don't know why. It just seems a little jarring and a little off. I don't know why that was the case, that it was that bright yellow. Um, maybe there's not a better option. I don't know. But I just that just feels off to me for the rest of the presentation. But everything else looks so good sitting on your board. I love the way your city looks completely different than anyone else's. Uh, I love how the points are calculated. I love that there's a race to get those walls, and hopefully you can wall in some something and double its points or you can die trying sometimes. Uh, I just really enjoy this game. Era is a fantastic game. If you like dice placement games, or excuse me, dice uh, roll and write type games, if you like city building games, engine building games, this is a 100% win for you. Um, it does, it can stretch a little too long sometimes even though those buildings don't, you know, that really determines it. But Depending on what people do, you can go several more rounds than it really should sometimes, but I do enjoy Era. It's a very fun game. It's a very pretty game, and this one's called Era Medieval Age. I do hope that there's like Era, you know, fill in the blank, Space Age, whatever, you know, whether you go fantasy or not. I'd like to see more from this concept, not necessarily even expansions, but totally different eras, hence the name. So I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Dice Tower Brian, uh, Instagram, all that sort of stuff. Watch some of the other reviews we've done here on the Dice Tower. I think we're running about 250 or so right down in the bottom there's a playlist with all those until next time we will see you thanks so much for watching another dice tower video if you enjoy our videos subscribe to the channel for more fun comprehensive board game coverage also consider joining us at one of our events come to dice tower retreat a small intimate gathering where gaming is king join us for dice tower cruise the largest board game cruise Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.